course, their own way. Yeah, they do, do things in that way, and, uh, and that's, that's very important. Very, very important. Yeah. But then, other, other than South Africa, how important was going to London, I think it was in 1949, around that period? Is that very informative for you? Oh, absolutely. What happened then? And I, I absorbed my, my culture, art culture, I grew up in a library in Johannesburg, through books, through magazines, and came from America and Europe. So you were one of those children who would want to get magazines? Oh, yeah. Then when I got to London, the other girls at my post, the Royal Ballet, the Royal Opera, all the museums, all the wonderful publications, posters. I was in London uh, when, uh, the, when the UK staged the Festival of Britain, when all the best designers came together and put up a monstrous exhibition, which was a wake up after the war. Um, what excitement. I lived in a hostel with some other young men. And our conversation every morning at breakfast was the development of the professor of the world, what was up, what was the legacy up. It just it dominated our lives for, for months or years. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, um, obviously, you worked through the middle of the apartheid period, and obviously, the government was very controlling of liberal artists like yourself. They had a file on you. Yes, they thought I was a communist. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because the only communist in things like I did. Can we talk about nudes? <laughs> talk about nudes? Yeah, because I think it's one of like one of the rich ironies in, in fashion culture at the moment that you being one of the strongest influences on visual culture and the way that like you know the unstudied girly glamour that you do is you have an effect on fashion and yet you're mostly known for nudes. When did you realize that you wanted to go for that nudes? Well, when I was a young photographer, I did a series of pictures which uh, I sent to some magazines here in Europe and they got lost. And so my wife and I had a conference and we decided we should redo the pictures in his book form. And we saw it at the time that we did news and sell like crazy. It didn't always happen, but uh, that was our reason. Then once you, if you get a, you know, if you establish a new photographer, you have a bit of an education, you don't go out for the models, the models come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I often intend to do a portrait of a girl and I say to her, this is the dressing room, please help me see what you want to do. And I never ask them to get their clothes on. And after I read it, they come over here. I have to ask them. I have a theory that every woman with a good body wants the, wants the opportunity once in her life to show the world what she looks like. Mm -hmm. If she has done that one time, there are quite a few models here in this show who have never done any modeling before they came to me and have never done any after when they have finished our products. It was there once in their lifetime. And they're still friends and they said to me now, you know, I can remember every single show, how we did it, why we did it, what happened, why we did it. Every detail I had that remember because this was just one big happening in their lives. Well, women aren't the only ones who want to show off their body at least one time a year. Is there a reason why you never photograph male women? Well, I don't photograph don't really male
Are you very tough on the set? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for coming. Thanks.